Once your information is populated into Inventory Planner, there's some account setup that we need to walk through. So come up to Account, then Settings. Here you'll see your Shopify store connected as well as any other platforms that you've connected to Inventory Planner. If you have multiple locations set up in your Shopify store, you'll be able to see those in this warehouse view. You can then enable these locations or disable them on this screen. If you need to set up additional users for your account, you can do that under Settings and then Here in Users. You can add as many users as you'd like. There's no limit to how many users you can add for your Inventory Planner account. You can also set up different permissions for these users. Click on Edit. By default, the user will have full access, but once we click off of full access, we can see different areas of Inventory Planner. Let's check out Forecast Settings. By default, Inventory Planner has set up that we will consider out-of-stock information. This should be left enabled if you do not allow overselling in your store. So, if you allow overselling, that is when you are out of stock of an item and you continue selling that item, you should uncheck this box. For most stores, you should leave this checked. We'll get into what this does when we get into the forecasting se section of Inventory Planner. If your products are seasonal, you can set that up account-wide here in Inventory Planner. If most of your products are seasonal, it may be easier to set up products as seasonal by default. And then if you have certain products or variants that are not seasonal, you can change that setting on a SKU by SKU basis when we come back over here to replenishment. The forecast in Inventory Planner uses the sales velocity as the core of the forecast and then also considers recent trends. Here, you can set up how many months will be considered a trend. So in this case, once we see a trend in the same direction for two months in a row, then on the third month, we will consider that forecast needing to go in the same direction. So if you see an increase for two months in a row, then on the third month, we will forecast that there is also going to be an increase in demand by your customers. If you would like a default replenishment set up in Inventory Planner, then you can set that here. For example, if you have items with no sales yet, but you would like to keep one item in stock or a handful of items in stock, you can set that up here. Keep in mind that this is a setting for your products account wide. The final setting here in Forecast is for an ABC classification system. What this does is look at, in this case, the total revenue that your store has made over the last 30 days and looks at which products have contributed to 80% of that revenue. So which products were the top performing products in your store? And those will be considered A-class items, the next 15% B-class and the final 5% C-class. We do have the option where you could look at this in terms of units sold rather than revenue. You can also customize what percentage is considered an A-class. Maybe you want to see the top 50% of items contributing to revenue considered A-class, then you could update this information here. You'll need to click Save in order to remember this information in your account. Let's also check out alerts. Here is where you can enable low stock alerts, so emails that will be sent to you telling you what items are low stock based on the settings here in Inventory Planner. You can add in emails of people within your organization who should receive this information. Use a comma to separate their email addresses. You can change the frequency of how often to receive these emails. We do have a setting for safety stock, although we recommend that you do not use this. Safety stock will add to your recommended replenishment amount by the number that you put in this field. So that means if we recommend that you replenish 100 units and you have a safety stock of 10 units, the replenishment recommendation then will be 110 units. The reason that we don't recommend this is because this will be a static number, and in this case, a static number used for all products across your account. There is a better way to deal with this through adjusting days of stock, which we'll get into in the replenishment section, that will be more dynamic. This means if you set 10 units of safety stock, but your store doubles in size, those 10 units may not be relevant or sufficient to deal with supply chain problems that you may run into. So instead, you can increase your days of stock so that it grows as your store grows. We have a setting here with Delta Alerts. That means that instead of being alerted every day for everything that's 
low stock, we will only alert you when items are newly added to the list of what is low stock. And the final setting here is ignore products with a negative stock. This might include backorder items that then we would not include into your replenishment recommendations. Moving over to purchase orders, here we can connect QuickBooks or you can connect Xero. Keep in mind that QuickBooks in this case is QuickBooks Online, not Desktop or Enterprise. With either QuickBooks or a Xero connection here, you can push purchase orders to your accounting system directly from Inventory Planner. Also in the purchase order section, we can update where the purchase order counter will start. So presumably you've been creating purchase orders prior to starting with Inventory Planner. You can put in here any number that you like, which will start out your purchase orders when you start creating them here in Inventory Planner. If you'd like images of your products pulled through from your Shopify store into your purchase orders, you can enable that here. Same with cost prices. These will be enabled by default, so if you would like them not to appear on your purchase order, you can deselect either of these items and click Save to update this.